Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sid. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Sid underscore Dwyer. So I have been really in the mood to go over some internet history. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I am going to be talking about Gabby Hanna's story time videos. And a story time video is pretty self-explanatory. It's a video where someone tells a story, but usually when a YouTuber does it, it's in a very animated, emphatic, and embellished way. And YouTubers have done this to the point where it literally became a meme format. There would be like a minor inconvenience and then an example of how a YouTuber would twist that to create some kind of clickbait title. And these exaggerated story times used to be a really big thing on YouTube and a lot of YouTubers actually got their start by making them. Like Tana Mojo and Simply Nessa, for example. Their breakout videos on YouTube were story time videos. And while Gabby already had a pre-existing audience on YouTube from her Vine account, a large part of her audience was grown from her story time videos. And because that's what a lot of her audience liked from her, she kept making them. And she made heaps of them. Everything from bad Uber experiences, to supposedly getting scammed out of hundreds of dollars. But the story time that I'm going to start off talking about is titled, Cringiest Tinder Boy Roasted. And yeah, it would not be a story time video without the most amount of clickbait buzzwords shoved into the title. But basically, in 2016, Gabby was on Bumble. She then matched with a guy named Luke Barrow. And there's a reason why I'm already putting his name out there and his picture up on the screen, which I will get to in more depth shortly, because usually when somebody does a story time on somebody, the subject of that story time stays anonymous, like I should not know who this guy is. Usually when a YouTuber makes a story time about somebody, they will change the name of the person and they will change details about the person so that their audience cannot find out who they're talking about, you know, to avoid some kind of witch hunt happening. So anyway, after Luke and Gabby match on Bumble, they get chatting and pretty early into the conversation, things go south. Luke abruptly said this. Are you down to f or not? As you can imagine, Gabby did not appreciate that response and denied him. And as you can also imagine, he did not like that and started insulting her. So he tacks on, I was hoping you'd be less chubby. You have the flying squirrel. And in parentheses, a ton of arm fat. And then there was a bunch of back and forth. And while she's telling this story, she's putting all of his messages up on the screen with his face. And as I just mentioned, usually that's not the norm for a story time. So I thought that that was kind of weird. But then later, it all makes sense when she reveals that in real time, as she was having this conversation with him, she was posting it to Twitter. And while she was doing that, her fans quickly found out who he was and started harassing him. Me informing him that the reason I'm still talking to him is because this conversation is going viral on Twitter. Him saying, oh yeah, okay. Me sending him my Twitter handle. My hilarious and psycho followers somehow finding his Facebook and Instagram based on the very minimal information provided on his dating profile. Then spamming him on Instagram and Facebook. Him privatizing his Instagram and Facebook. And then him blocking me on Bumble. So essentially by making this story time video, she's just repeating what she did on Twitter, but to a much larger platform. And I will give it to Gabby, usually she's one of those story time YouTubers who will be totally discreet about th the subject of one of her story times, but in this case, she channeled her inner Tana Mojo and put his life all out there. But let's talk about you for a moment. If you want to make sure that your online identity stays hidden, you want to hear about today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. VPNs basically create an encrypted tunnel between you and the internet, which keeps all of your data private and your online identity hidden, which is definitely something that everyone who uses the internet should think about doing. Because at the end of the day, it's not these unhinged YouTubers you should be worried about. About, it's all of these people behind the scenes trying to steal your information. With Atlas VPN, you will not need to worry about that. And it truly is the biggest help to me when I'm trying to do research for videos. So many things happen to be geo-blocked, but with the click of a couple of buttons, I can change my virtual location to a country where something isn't blocked. So it just makes it so much easier to navigate the internet. But aside from all of the safety and convenience benefits of Atlas VPN, one of my favorite things to use it for is to get access to more TV shows and movies on streaming services. Because if I switch my virtual location from Australia to the US, I'm able to get a whole new array of TV shows and movies available on the US Netflix. It's great. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. 
it means you get a three-year subscription for just $1.99 a month. And there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so really there's no risk in trying it out. And this deal isn't going to last forever, so if you're at all interested, definitely jump on it ASAP by clicking the link at the top of the description box. But anyways, back to the video. So Storytime YouTubers really were the cause of a lot of inadvertent and deliberate witch hunts. And a witch hunt can be pretty much summed up as the searching out and deliberate harassment of those with unpopular views. So basically in the context of YouTube, say somebody did something that the YouTuber didn't like, then the YouTuber will put their whole life on blast so that the fans rally behind them. And that is pretty much what Gabby did in this case. And she did kind of attempt to stop her fans from doing this by putting a little note in her description box. Do not try to find this person and attack them. Like honestly guys, you guys are like the effing CIA. You guys know I am generally a very positive person and I don't condone attacking others for any reason. I was just feeling super petty and hypocritical when I decided to make this video. And that warning is kind of redundant considering that her fans had already found out who he was before she ever even posted that video. And this video isn't me trying to be like, Gabby's an awful person for doing this. I get it, this happened a long time ago. Gabby has well and truly moved on from this kind of content. But to me, it's just kind of interesting to look back on this sort of stuff that took place on YouTube. Again, this is just a video about revisiting some internet history. And don't get me wrong, this guy sucks. He is a jerk, and if I was in Gabby's position, I'd want his pillows to be warm on both sides. But I'm just baffled, but at the same time, kind of not, that this minor interaction turned into this whole big saga. Oh, and back to the video real quick, because that is not where it ended. Because it's 2016, she did a roast on him for the second half of the video. Let's knock your ego down a few, shall we? <clears throat> Boy, what are these poses? I know what to call this pose. This is the, this is the size of my dick pose. I call this one the, this is why I'm an unemployed actor pose. I call this pose, are these friends taking these photos or relatives who feel obligated to hang out with me? Then a few months later in November, surprisingly, Gabby and Luke collaborated together. He did an interview with her on her channel. This is cringy Tinder boy. She confronted him about the fact that many other people had come forward to her about bad experiences that they had also had with him on dating apps, as well as bad experiences they had with him in person. And she really calls him out and not gonna lie, it's pretty juicy. One thing that you said to me when you were begging me to take down this video and take down these tweets yeah. was I never treat girls like this. This is the first time I've ever done this. I know you won't believe me, but I swear I'm a good guy. I don't talk to girls like this. And then I get a screenshot from messages from you, basically the exact same thing that happened to me where you're trying to hook up with a girl and then she said no and all of a sudden you're insulting her and the way she looked. So really it's not just a one-time occurrence. I can only assume that if you, I said this in the video, if you jump right in or we're gonna or not, whatever you're fat, this can't be a first time offense. No, obviously not, not a first time offense. Uh, clearly I was in defense mode at that point. Uh, I don't feel like it's it's one of those things like I do it all the time. There was also that other guy who reached out and he said that his brother had worked with you. I have no idea who that is at all. Like, but like he had like some, I, I believe him because obviously he's my follower and I trust him. He had a lot of the details right, it seemed like a weird story to make up, so I believe that that probably happened. I don't even know the story. Training with a guy and then, you know, every party you would go to, you were saying these rude things to girls, you'd try to hook up, they'd say no and you were rude to them and he said something to you and you like freaked out on him and you were just like dude we're done here and then you made him leave mid-session that 100% didn't happen. I trained recently only a couple guys, and one of those was like a 45-year-old man, so I don't know if he... He's a cute kid. He's very, he's very, like... Alright, let's get into some different stuff. I don't know. I'm not denying it. I'm not denying it. That 100% didn't happen. I'm glad that you're saying you don't deny it, because I'm pretty sure it happened. And when Gabby uploads that video, she also uploads a vlog about that situation to her vlog channel. They were hanging out and having some drinks, and it seemed like they were actually clicking and connecting. But then something else was revealed at the end of the vlog. He hadn't been so nice to her fans over social media and she confronts him about this and she believes that he tried to manipulate his way out of it. She also comes to the realization that he never apologized for the initial interaction that they had over Bumble. And then that is kind of where the situation ended as far as I know. But then early this year, 2022, she made a tweet about the situation where she took accountability. So yeah, I think that this situation truly 
captures the essence of a YouTuber story time. It started off as a small interaction with somebody turned into a whole video because of course it did. An opportunity to look like the good guy in a video is an opportunity a story time YouTuber cannot pass down. And Gabby always being the good guy is definitely something that I want to talk about more. One thing that I've noticed is that in pretty much every one of her story times is that she is the protagonist, the hero, if you will. Even though if you read between the lines, you will be able to tell that she is nothing of the sort. And a good example of this is her psycho roommate story time. And I just firstly want to thank the YouTuber Bland and Cozy because they also made a video about this story time. And it really helped me when making this video. So definitely go check them out. The link to their channel will be in the description box below. And what she kind of showed in her video was that Gabby had a big case of a term popularized on TikTok main character syndrome. And main character syndrome is a type of condition characterized by one feeling as though they are destined to become a main character through possessing attributes and or having events happen in their life that cause them to become like the protagonist of any fictional story. So yeah, I think you'll find that that term suits Gabby pretty well. So yeah, let's get into the story time where her main character qualities really shine through. So essentially, when Gabby first moves to LA, she needs to find somewhere to live. So she finds a listing on Craigslist of someone wanting a roommate. She responds and she goes and checks out the apartment. And at first there were multiple red flags, but Gabby decides to move in with her anyways. And then over time, there were more and more red flags, which Gabby talks about in her story time. The apartment is so shitty. Writing on the walls. The kitchen is literally half painted. When I say half painted, I mean that they used to be, I think, orange cabinets and she went like this with green paint. Now this girl doesn't have any friends. In seven months that I was living here, she never had one friend over. The night she knows I have two friends staying with me, she invites six people over. We live in this tiny two bedroom apartment. It was just so rude. Like she's just so rude and inconsiderate. And one of the biggest issues that Gabby had with her roommate and the apartment was how messy it was. I'm not really interested in no furniture now, except for one disgusting, ripped up, dirt crusted couch. I don't like living in filth. I don't need everything brand new and modern, but it needs to be clean. Like she's a super dirty girl, doesn't care about dishes at all, never once has made any attempt to clean the bathroom. Like it's always me sweeping, always me mopping, always me dusting. Which is something that's kind of interesting to look back at now, considering that Gabby's wave of content after her story time era was cleaning apartment videos and it wasn't just any old cleaning content it was cleaning things like after three years so things got pretty bad if not worse or at least on par with how things were with her psycho roommate so yeah just check out these comparisons that bland and cozy put together from when she lived with her psycho roommate and then how she lived after that first i want to give you a little apartment tour to show you what my life is like Very embarrassing and shameful what my apartment looks like right now. Like it looked so jacked up. I walk in and I'm like, oh. they're coming in and walking into this and there's just like clothes all over the floor and this is unacceptable. I don't know what to do. Yeah, lots of trash, lots of trash. Dude, this is bad. The apartment is so shitty. Writing on the walls. The kitchen is literally half painted. She put painter's tape in the corners like she was ready to paint and she just never painted it. I was initially like, no, not really interested in this place. After a few weeks, I was just like, Fuck it, I'm gonna move into this place. So I come in and the kitchen is still half painted. But she seemed really stressed out and I was like, you know what, it's fine, I'm, whatever, I'll do it. <laughs> but she seemed really stressed out. They're here and they're gonna know I'm gross. The strangers are coming in to look at my trash. <laughs> what do I do with all this stuff? <laughs> it's am overwhelmed. And I was like, you know what, it's fine, I'm, whatever. So perhaps when she started living by herself, it was a moment of realization and growth when she found out how hard it was to stay on top of things. But evidence does suggest that she was always like that, even when she lived with her psycho roommate. Because before, even from Pennsylvania, I would bring so much stuff, and it's just stuff that I don't need in my life. 2014. That means this expired five years ago. How did it even get here? I think I've been in LA for five years. Which is kind of an example of a main character characteristic, thinking that she can do no wrong 
when she was likely guilty of doing the same things that she was accusing her roommate of doing. Another example of this is when Gabby decides to move out but she goes about this in a very annoying way. So she finds a new place where she wants to live and she applies for it and then she puts her 30 day notice to the landlord, but doesn't tell her roommate that she's going to move out. Then the potential new apartment that Gabby was going to move into becomes unavailable. So she can no longer move into it. And then it must've been Gabby's lucky day because all of a sudden it does become available again. And this is when Gabby decides to tell her roommate that she is moving out. And her roommate, of course, feels a little blindsided by that because if things had have just gone through smoothly the first time, was she just gonna come into the apartment one day and see that Gabby had up and gone? So that caused a little bit of tension between them. But then Gabby decides not to move out because things are becoming hectic in her professional life and she thinks that moving at the same time would just be too much for her. So she wanted to take back her 30 days notice. This part she tells her roommate and then her roommate tells her that she needs to tell the landlord in writing. And then what ends up happening is that Gabby doesn't get around to doing the paperwork to take back her 30 days notice. And then her roommate decides to re-sign the lease, but without Gabby on it. And I get a voicemail from this bitch and it says hey so our landlord called she said you still haven't provided a notice saying that you wanted to stay i went ahead and re-signed the lease without your name on it you are legally obligated to vacate the premises by june 2nd and might do you a favor and be nice and let you stay until the 7th but yeah just a heads up bye this sneaky bitch did this behind my back so gabby feels as though her roommate was sneaking around behind her back to do that but didn't gabby sneak behind her roommate's back and go directly to her landlord to put her 30 days notice in and i mean her hypocrisy isn't the only issue in that situation what can she expect she didn't even put her paperwork in to take back her 30 days notice and she messed her roommate and her landlord around multiple times by changing her mind and there was previously a situation where gabby parked in their neighbor's parking spot because it was late and she was tired and then this became an issue for her neighbor and then i come home that night it's like 11 o'clock midnight i'm super exhausted was thinking about it at all i just pulled into the parking spot without thinking went in my room passed out on my face i was so tired i wake up to three missed calls a voicemail and like 10 texts from my roommate and she's freaking out she's like oh my god dude seriously she always says dude that is so rude our neighbor is so pissed how could you do that that's so disrespectful her roommate wanted to address this situation with her but she dismissed it and acted as if her life was more important. So then she comes out and she wants to like start a fight. Do not fight with me. I'm not the person you want to fight with. I was just like, I'm late for a shoot. I have to get ready now. This conversation's over. And she goes, oh, your life is so much more important than my feelings. And I was like, yeah, me going to work and being on time to get to set is a lot more important to me than your weird little problem with the parking spot like <laughs> so even if the roommate was being sneaky there are many valid reasons as to why the roommate would want to re-sign the lease without gabby on it but yet she's putting herself up on some kind of moral high ground thinking that it's only okay when she does something like this not somebody else it just seems like this story time as well as pretty much all of her other story times, just serve as some kind of vessel for validation. She'd talk about a confrontation and then position herself as the morally superior one and then get millions of views for it, which only validates her side of the story. Another clear example of this is when she makes a story time video about her ex-friend Jessie Smiles. You know Jessie, she's had a very public feud with Gabby over the last few years and she was the subject of one of Gabby's story times and Gabby was also the subject of one of her story times. And what kind of makes it interesting for Gabby to take aim at Jessie in one of her story times is that Jessie was also a a story time YouTuber. So by Gabby making a story time about Jessie where she positions herself as the morally superior one, it's kind of risking Jessie coming forward and making some kind of response. Like Gabby's Uber drivers and nutritionists and pathologically lying boyfriends aren't going to come forward with their side of the story because they'd be opening themselves up to a whole bunch of hate. 
since they don't have a platform themselves. But with Gabby and Jesse, they could easily respond to each other if they wanted to. And that is kind of what happened eventually. In the story times that they did about each other, they initially hid each other's identities. But then Jesse revealed that one of her story times was about Gabby, and that one of Gabby's story times was about her. So let's get into those story times. But basically, Gabby uploaded a story time video titled, I stole my best friend's boyfriend. And by that title, you may think that that's a bit of a change for Gabby. Maybe she's telling a story where she's the bad guy. But soon into the video, it's pretty clear that the title isn't a statement. It's sarcasm or or just a question. So she prefaces the video that we won't find out who the person is that she's talking about. You have literally no idea who it's about. <laughs> I promise. Don't try to speculate in the comments because I know you guys love to do it because you'll never guess. You just don't know her. She is a stranger to you. <laughs> and I'm not trying to get some drama started with some YouTuber that you guys decided it was because it wasn't. And I mean, she is right. It was never definitively worked out that the story time was about Jesse until Jesse said so. So essentially what happened in Gabby's story time was that Gabby, Jesse, and Jesse's boyfriend all went to a party together. And then at this party, they decided to play ping pong in teams of two. And then Gabby and Jesse's boyfriend were put in a team together. And then they kind of ended up getting separated from the rest of the group and shared beverages and just got friendly. And to say the least, Jessie did not like that they did this, and she sent Gabby a long text message the next day. And then Jessie provided some clarification on the whole ping pong party situation. Her and Richie sat across from each other the entire night and shared wine, like literally drinking from the wine bottle just between them two. They did not mingle or talk to anyone else virtually the entire night, and it made me feel uncomfortable. And when Gabby originally uploaded that story time, Jessie messaged Gabby telling her that she would have to defend herself. Nothing came of Jessie's claims. She never ended up defending herself at that time. But then Gabby later claimed that this was Jessie blackmailing her. So Jessie responds to those claims saying that Gabby lied in the story time and that she did not blackmail Gabby. Quite frankly, she lied in it because no, I'm not insane, Gabby. The story ended with you trying to have sex with Richie. I was like, why are you going so hard on a topic where you're dead wrong for? But anyway, I texted her and we spoke about this on the phone call. I said something to the effect of, hey, what the fuck? If you keep this video up, I'm gonna have to defend myself. Like you're lying in this video. And that is what Gabby Hanna deems as blackmail. And then years later, Jesse points out some distinct differences between the story times that they've done on each other. Gabby immediately positions herself in the right and calls Jesse crazy, whereas Jesse is respectful and implores her viewers to let her know if she's actually in the wrong in this situation. And I just want to compare to you the beginning of her videos and how she describes me versus the beginning of my videos about her and how I describe her. Now, I have admitted in the past that I myself have had some crazy bitch moments, but there is a huge astronomical difference between having crazy bitch moments and being a crazy bitch. Honestly, looking back at my time with this person, I do look at it with fondness because we did have a lot of fun together and she did mean a lot to me at the time. But sometimes it's hard to believe now here where I am in my life that I ever put up with this type of behavior, the amount of stories that I have. But that's kind of my issue that I learned about myself thanks to a year of therapy is I seek out like emotionally unstable, neurotic people and I try to fix them. Even if I'm not trying to fix them, it's like I feel like I need to support them and be there for them. So like I said, I have a lot of stories about this friend in particular, but I think that this is the first one where I was like, oh, you're psychotic. And this is how I introduced the situation about her. And I saw an email that apparently was sent to me while I did not have access, and it was from someone that I used to be friends with way back in the day. So I read this email, and in this email, this person mentioned this thing that I'm about to tell you guys about. And they mentioned it in a way that made it seem like they were so like really angry about it, and I was just thinking to myself, like, what the fuck are they talking about? I'm tell you how this situation happened obviously through my perspective I can't tell you how they saw it and I want you guys to be honest with me tell me if I'm in the wrong here maybe I just don't understand or don't see why I was wrong in this situation but I want I need you guys to tell me so a bit of a difference there a bit of a difference in respect and that's pretty much all of the drama that ensued from this story time 
and it really does not surprise me that story times are kind of a dead genre at this point. Oh, and more recently, Gabby talked about why she stopped making story time videos. Essentially, it was because she adopted a different persona to tell these story times, and she just wanted to be more herself. Why did you stop making story time? Kind of playing a character, like a very big version of myself. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, don't forget about that huge discount that Atlas VPN is running. You get a three-year subscription for just $1.99 a month. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drink water. Be nice to animals. Let's take a moment of silence for everyone who has to deal with Karens. And I'll see you in my next video.